The Honorable Chief Justice and Associate Justices of the Supreme Court. The House will come to order. The Senate will come to order. The opponents, I have uh, Robert Duckworth and uh, uh, Sher Sherry Hancock. Sherry Hancock. Okay. Good afternoon. I apologize. Mr. <coughs> Duckworth is across the hall. He's the clerk and, um, in Arundel County, and he's sitting on another house bill at this time as we speak. So Mr. Duckworth has, Worth has prepared a statement that he would like me to present to you, and then I, as the clerk of the court in Charles County, would like to have a couple of words as well. Okay. Um, Mr. Duckworth would like me to present. Um, he represented himself, and then he said there's a few points that he would like to make considering this bill. His first point, if, an act, if enacted, House Bill 955 would be on, unconstitutional. It would go beyond the intent of the Maryland Constitution regarding elected offices and would set a terrible precedent and watering down the role of a two-party system. Party affiliation does matter. Number two, his concern was also if enacted, House Bill 955, fully would undermine the democratic electoral process of government by, for which the people, that's what our county and our free state was built upon. As such, this bill denies voters their full voting rights to choose elected officials. Voters want and deserve to know what people running for these officers stand for. The people want more democracy, not less. And his comment was, why muzzle it? His third position was, the office of the elected circuit court clerk is not merely a green-eyed shade of administration, um, but a constitutional state office. Unlike county treasurers, clerks are locally elected in each of the 24 jurisdictions. But these political offices are located statewide judicial, in the judicial branch. Their duties go beyond administrative functions. In the past 20 years, no elected clerk has ever abused their office, and in fact, they have served the citizens of Maryland with honor and distinction. His fourth and last point is the assumption of House Bill 955 is that party politics gives, gives us a less quality person for the job. His comment was really, if that assumption holds true, then House Bill 955 should make every office nonpartisan, from governor, attorney, general, and controller, state, senate, and delegate to the state's attorney's office and sheriff. Why stop at the clerk, the circuit court, or the register of wills? In conclusion, I mean, in conclusion, Clerk Duckworth believes it's a bad law and a bad fit for mail-in voters and a bad idea for democracy. My comment is I've been part of the clerk's office for over 30 years. I ran two elections, one with the opposition, one unopposed. I believe that the citizens of the county that we serve should have the right to place the person who they feel is the best qualified person who has the knowledge and the skill and the dedication and the commitment to do the job. I, as the clerk in Charles County Circuit Court, oppose House Bill 955. Is there any questions? Thank you very much. Any questions? Delegate Kaiser. Uh, I wanted to ask a question based on uh, one of the points in, in your written and verbal testimony about the job of the circuit court not being just an administrative position. Can you give me an example of two things that the clerk does that are not administrative? Um, the majority is administrative duties. However, we are following um, the rules and the procedures set um, by law. We enact the rules and procedure. Um, that would be number one. We follow the Constitution um, and the laws. We have a lot of knowledge. We're not allowed to give legal advice, but we do have to follow the laws as set forth. Thank you. With regards to uh, the, the opposition on this, <clears throat> currently, you know, I know in certain jurisdictions, most people think that law enforcement and education kind of go hand in hand. And so I know that the boards of education are nonpartisan. And uh, for something like law enforcement and more administrative things, why would there be a fight for this? 
against this. Why would we oppose it? Because we believe the citizens of the county should be able to elect their constitutional elected officers. And we believe that – and there are clerks across the board where one county might be highly Republican, one Democrat, and that clerk, that is the highly qualified clerk, may not have the advantage. However, we believe it is proper for the citizens of each county to be able to elect their clerk. I think that's kind of the argument of this bill. And let me ask you this question. What good is it to have a clerk of a court that's Democrat or Republican? It's not – we represent all the people, such as everybody else does, too. Our job is to make sure that we enact the laws that are faced. We administrate the duties. We process the cases. We set them in. We have judicial functions, and we have nonjudicial functions of the clerk's office. We administer oaths. We process criminal, civil, juvenile, land records departments, notaries. I understand that. I'm just saying – There's a host of things. Which one of those duties is something that a Democrat or Republican may do differently? We don't. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then we have Paul Rasmussen. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Paul Zimmerman, and I am the Vice President of the Register of Wills Association, and I'm the Register of Wills for Carroll County. And we also, as an association, unanimously oppose this bill. And I agree with a lot of what Ms. Hancock said. I'd also like to put a little bit more of a practical face to it. At this point in time, there really isn't a problem as such, so we don't see this great need to change it. The potential issues dealing with this, it could make it more difficult for people to run for offices because it could potentially make it more difficult to get exposure and also, again, in a practical manner, to raise money for a campaign. Because as it is now, a lot of the central committees give help to all different offices, including the Register of Wills, including the clerk of the court. And this was brought to me. This doesn't happen in Carroll County, but in some of the larger counties, there are also tickets that are formed, courthouse tickets that are formed that help them to raise money as well as save money. One of the other practical problems in this, with the way this bill is written, is that you could potentially be running against the same person twice. And I know it really doesn't matter as much with the Board of Elections because of the fact that you've got a number of people running for those particular positions. I know one of the delegates over here mentioned about the Board of Elections. But in this particular case, the way it is, is there could be three people running. And as it is now, if you've got, if you're in a Democratic county, there could be three Democrats running and no Republicans. You would win the primary. The primary would carry through the general. You wouldn't have to run again that second time. Same way within Republican counties. In this particular case, you would have, say, three people running for the office. And in the primary, one could get 75 percent, one could get 20 percent, one could get 5 percent. And even though you've won by 55 percent, you would have to run again against the person that got the 20 percent in the general election. If you've got 80 percent and number two and number three each got 10 percent, then all three of you would be running again in the general election. And as it is right now, there's a cost savings by not having to run if you don't have somebody opposing you. Whereas now there will always be, as long as there's one other person or two other people, you'll be running in both elections. So, thank you. Any questions, Delegate Barbee? So, are you saying that if we pass this bill, it would make, it would have the paradoxical effect of making the campaigns more competitive? Not necessarily competitive, because like I said, if you won the first one by 55 percent of the vote and you've got to run again, it's not really going to be that, necessarily that much more competitive, but you still have to go out and campaign. You still have to spend the money for the general. And as it is right now, you've got, as it is now, you have to go out, you have to campaign. No, but I mean, I took your testimony to mean that under the current system where party committees and slates help candidates, it would be easier for people to run, 
whereas if we eliminated party participation, it would make it more competitive and harder for people to run for these races if they were nonpartisan. It could be, because of the fact that you don't have a backing within the particular parties, um, so there would be, it would be much more difficult to raise money for the campaign. Okay, thank you. So it's, it's basically all the money as opposed to, you know, the, the number of people running. I don't my I believe you listened to the lady from the uh, League of Women Voters, and by listening to your testimony and the lady in front of you, uh, you're making my argument. You're, you're making exactly why I put this bill in. And I, I guess along that, and I, I was going to ask uh, the uh, previous uh, uh, person here, what policy, we, we come here as legislators uh, every year to make policy. We can change the law. We do it every year. What policy can you change? What policies, the, the, the legislature gives you the rules of engagement. This is what we, how we want you to fulfill your duties as register, as clerk, as sheriff. What policy can you change in well, your a, job? A number of, specifically change ourselves, none. But most of the policies that... Thank you very that, much. That's, 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 the, that's what I wanted to know. Yes, thank you. You know, this, I, I'm trying to see what the real problem is here mm -hmm. that we're trying to fix. And I still don't see the real problem because, I mean, I've had not one person over the last four years come to me and say, oh, we need to change these offices and make them the way you just suggested. I just can't get to the problem. I haven't heard it in any other, in other counties. And I wonder whether or not this should really have been filed as a local bill if, if that's what they want to do in, 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 that, in that particular county. I just... Maybe you can enlighten me. Have you heard a lot of, you know, demands and requests that this we ought to bring about this change where you are? Um, in contact with the other members of the association as well as personally, we have not heard any issues that would lead toward this bill. There's been no questions from people saying why can't this be nonpartisan? That it's never been it's never been an issue that's been raised in any of the elections that I'm aware of. Right. Thank you. Uh, address that question uh, to Delegate Turner. In preparing and going forth with this bill, it's interesting. I contacted, I contacted uh, both some sheriffs, Register Wilson, obviously in Western Maryland, and it was interesting. Once I filed the bill, and the association found out about the bill, all of them called me back and said they were against the bill, but before they were for it. So it's, it's uh, uh, I think the association speaking more so than maybe f from the individuals. Because most of the ones I spoke with, it was kind of like, uh, sure, it, you know, we, we, we have a job. And we're, elect we're elected to do that job, not make policy. Thank you.